In this episode, we're going to talk about how I built this 2x72 belt grinder. Let's get the build started. I just want to take a minute and pause and review the technique I'm using to cut this steel. Uh, I need this steel to be about maybe 50 thousandths over one and a half inches. And I know I'm not going to be able to do that with a cut. Uh, I am cutting these down maybe 60 or 70 thousandths over one and a half and then grinding them to their final dimension. Here is one that I've cut. It's pretty rough. And then I'm using a set of calipers. This one looks pretty good. I've ground it down with that uh, disc sander over there. And I'm getting it decently accurate. The problem I'm having is I tried my cut originally with one fence and the saw moved around. And then I got a little bit of a, uh, like a, a miscut or whatever. You can kind of see there's like a lip um, right there. Kind of hard to see on camera. Um, so I came up with this system of doing two guides so the saw will cut exactly straight. That way it's gonna give me a nice clean edge. That edge is really important as a reference edge for when I'm gonna be making the next cut. So the design that I came up with here is to use just a standard combination square ruler. I reference my straight edge off that for the first straight edge. Then I cut a wood block that fits in between and then I've clamped these two rails in. What this does is it allows me to use the saw and cut everything nice and straight without the saw moving too much, uh, keeping this cut straight. And then I can follow everything up with a grind later. Uh, but this will just kind of keep me on track. I want to spend a minute and review how I laid out the holes for mounting this motor to this plate. This motor is a US style motor that follows the NEMA standards. If you go with an Imperial motor, these numbers will be different. For all the NEMA motors of this frame style, these measurements should apply. The first step you're going to want to do is to mark a center point for your location. Once that is done, you'll draw a circle with a radius of five and seven eighths, which is what this is set to. Once you have that circle drawn, you'll draw a box around the circle, making sure everything is square. Then you're gonna draw diagonal lines at 90 degrees from each other through the center of your box, contacting the center of the circle. Where those diagonal lines contact the circle is gonna be where you put your mounting holes. It's relatively simple once you have the information, um, but finding the information was a little bit difficult for me. So I hope this helps you.
All right, we got the plate cut, and I just wanna talk about some design changes we've made uh, since we started the process. As you've already seen, we switched to a different design for the four-part receiver. We're using these standoffs. Makes things a lot more accurate. Um, the difficulty was grinding all of these straight, but as you've seen, we were able to get that uh, within a really tight tolerance. For the next step, uh, I went ahead and cut all this plate and dimensioned it on the grinder. These pieces here, they're gonna be the 90 degree wings that actually hold the tilting mechanism. All right. These guys here will be the actual uh, trundles, I guess you would call them, um, that allow the actual grinder to rotate. And this one here is a little bit longer, so it clears in the back. And then these plates here are gonna be the spacers that are in between these uprights. Took quite a lot of time to get that cut just because it is half inch and to get everything ground nice and square. Um, the way the design is progressing now is a lot more bolt up oriented, meaning that previously I thought there was gonna be a ton of welding on this project, but as I strayed away from the design here, I really wanted to avoid warping, um, but I also am pretty OCD on like a clean weld line. So I really don't like the look of just doing a weld here, here, here. I really like a nice clean weld um, when I have the chance, but in doing that, it creates a lot of heat. So I'm really moving towards this design where I minimize the welding that needs to be done uh, and do the bolting. Um, the pros in that is it's gonna keep everything square and straight, which is really good for this. Um, the con is that it's just gonna be a lot of tapping work, um, a lot of hole drilling, that sort of thing. Uh, but the benefit of doing that is that if for any reason I do need to tear this down um, or not that I'm thinking of doing this uh, seriously, but if I ever had to make a couple of these, um, all I would have to do is machine the plate um, and bolt everything together. And if I needed to ship them or do anything like that, it would be much easier to do individually like plates uh, as opposed to one large thing. The only thing that I have not dimensioned is this uh, plate here for the receiver. I'm intentionally leaving this long so that way when I decide to do the tensioning mechanism, um, I can integrate that as much a part of this piece as possible. I don't wanna go ahead and cut this off right now and then decide that I'm gonna to have to add a little extension, which I would have originally liked that to be as much a part of this as possible just for rigidity and strength. So I'm gonna assemble the whole grinder, I'm gonna do the holes, and then once I get to that point and I can decide how I wanna do the tensioning system at that plate, um, at that point, I'll dimension this final piece. So let's get all this stuff uh, drilled and tapped and get it all together. Thank you.
All right, we made some good progress on the grinder here. Uh, so today what we did is we knocked out this trundle assembly here. Um, basically got everything assembled that we were working on yesterday and then went ahead and installed this kind of plunger mechanism. That way you can rotate this. Um, I have it just set up right here so you can see it, but I'll remove this. This plunger is gonna allow it to be pulled out and then this whole thing can rotate and then it'll find its home right there. That is the way it's gonna rotate um, from horizontal to vertical. Now, typically you would do like a, a cutout or a notch that you'd route out on a mill, um, but by doing this, it allows you to avoid doing that. And I actually like it a little bit better because you don't have to tighten it down. One of the main criticisms of this design is, is that this is not going to be secure enough. Uh, there is a little bit of movement side to side. Um, I tried to dial that out by just tightening up the pin and I got it to be perfectly uh, flat with no movement. The problem is, is when you do that, this retractor pin, it's just too stiff. It doesn't work right. So I, I put the slot back in there. It's designed to be that way, but I think once weight is on here, it will actually load up nicely. Um, and it's gonna be about 100 pounds cantilevered on one side or the other. So I think it won't be an issue. Uh, and it'll allow it to be easy enough to go ahead and pull out and it finds its home super nicely. Uh, I really like this idea. This is, I believe, what uh, Alec uses on his, uh, Alec Steel on his belt grinder that he sells, the deluxe one. Um, it's kind of hard to find any belt grinders using this system. I wanted to give it a try. One, because I like the look of this cool knurled knob. And two, I really didn't have a way um, to kind of cut out that um, radius or arc. I had a couple ideas on how to do it on the drill press and then follow up with a file. But to be honest, I really didn't want to be filing all day. And I knew that I wouldn't be able to get it perfect anyway. So I think this will work. We'll give this a try and see how it works out. Uh, other than that, the next step, once I have this cut um, and I have the back piece here as well. So this is gonna come over here. It's a little bit longer here because this piece on the front attaches to this receiver and the back piece comes behind the receiver and actually attaches to the plate. So that's what we'll be working on next. Um, I really think getting all this set up um, and dialed in was kind of the hardest part. Drilling the holes on the bottom here was very difficult and tapping them just because I had to drill upward. Um, but other than that, I think once we got all of these things dialed in, the next section moving forward should be a little bit easier. I think we've crossed kind of the hardest parts. So let's get started with the other part of the build and let's get going. All right, the next step in the process is designing the tensioner and tracking device. 
Now I'm trying to do something a little bit unique here. I'm trying to combine a infinite adjustable tensioner, which is a design that Alex Steele uses in his design, and just a standard belt grinder tracking mechanism in the same uh, location. So I'm gonna be using uh, a design from Jeremy Schmidt for the belt tracking. Typical designs allow you to adjust the belt tracking on the side, but the problem is, is if I do a standard side adjustment knob on my belt tracking, it is gonna interfere with the handle that pulls down. So basically I need to be able to adjust the tension and also the tracking uh, in a vertical position. So I can have basically like one lever to pull and then an adjustment right next to it. That way they don't interfere. Uh, typically with engineering, you do not wanna make too many small moving pieces close together um, in one part because it can basically create a lot of unnecessary slop and movement, especially when you're trying to make one piece do double duty. Uh, keeping it simple is generally better in terms of design if possible. In this case, that's not going to be possible. So I'm gonna be doing my own custom hinge here just to minimize slop. Um, if you look at a lot of the other designs with the attention on the handle, uh, like Alex Steele's design, he actually uses the tension in the motor and that's how Travis Wirtz does it as well. Um, that way it can keep things simple. However, I wanted to keep the motor rigid mounted to my half inch plate. That way it wouldn't move and it would be very solid. So we're gonna attempt to do this and see how successful it is. Um, I've created a large piece here. I think it's about an inch thick. So that way I have plenty of material for my adjustment screw to contact. And then I have this uh, precision rod I found at the scrap yard, uh, my metal scrap yard. It looks like it's stainless steel and it had been turned down on a lathe. Um, it actually fits really nicely inside of this Schedule 40 half-inch pipe. So we're gonna get that made up and let's just take a look and see how this turns out. got that hinge made. I have some pop can shims in there so that way when we get it welded up, if there's any shrinkage, there'll be some room for clearance. I sanded this nice V-groove in here so the, the hinge will fit in there nicely. Um, and then I have a 1 8, 1 8 inch spacer in there which will give us plenty of room for adjustment. We'll get this hinge welded up and we'll go from there. Oh,
just got the belt tension system dialed in. I put this wheel on here just so you could see how it works. I added this basically thumb wheel or knurled knob and you can adjust it down and up. The hinge has basically no slop, which was awesome. I have a regular bolt through here temporarily until I get a long enough shoulder bolt. I'll go ahead and take this off so you can kind of see the design here. This is not the nut we're gonna be using. So if you take a look here, this is the way it's gonna be working. Then I'll spin you around so you can take a look at this side as well. Um, so what we're gonna do that's gonna be a little bit more unique, this is pretty normal. Usually this adjustment is on the side and pushes the wheel out. Um, I got this design from Jeremy Schmidt. By putting it up here as you go down, it's gonna bring it out as you go up, vice versa. The nice thing about this is I'm gonna be adding another lever here for the actual tension. And because I have that lever, I'm gonna offset it slightly. It should be able to clear this because um, that lever needs to be able to rotate fully. So this design is allowing for the lever. That'll be the next step is to add a lever here and it's gonna rest on like a, uh, an incline plane and it will be like an infinitely adjustable tension. Um, this is nice and tight, not a lot of slop, but, but still movable. Um, and it'll be probably a little bit better with a shoulder bolt versus just a fully threaded bolt. Other than that, this is pretty straightforward. I didn't show making this. This is pretty simple. It's like everything else I've done. I basically welded two pieces of half inch together and then a third piece on top for the plate, ground everything down and then bolted it on here, tapped it, that whole thing. Um, other than that, this is pretty straightforward. This was one of the more challenging parts I was thinking. Um, to be honest, from a design standpoint, it is challenging, um, but really like getting all these holes precisely in the beginning steps was a lot more difficult than actually making this once I got the hang of what I was doing. Um, so let's get started with the next step, which is gonna be actually attaching the tensioning arm here. And I think it'll tie in nicely. So let's get to that. Getting this infinitely adjustable tension dialed in was quite tricky, but I'm happy with where it's at. Um, it took way longer than I want to admit, but that's because with this design, I had to really do a lot of trial and error, and I had to really make it and then go and tune it and see where I was. I'll turn this around so you can see the design. So this uses a cam lobe design Basically, as you move this lever up, uh, the cam actuates the tension. The benefit of a design like this is you can get some really nice tension because this gives you a lot of leverage. The other thing is, is obviously it's infinitely adjustable, so you can put it anywhere you want, which is nice if you're doing slack belt or anything where the tension needs to be a little bit less. Um, and then if you really wanna crank it down, this is gonna give you a little bit more leverage than a traditional, just a spring type. Um, system where the spring is under here. What I will say about making this is the technique I used is I basically drew this out as a guess as what I thought the shape would be, drilled my center hole, 
and then tested it. And then when the radius was incorrect, I either subtracted metal via the grinder or added metal with a welder to dial in this radius. When this doesn't work, you'll basically put it in a spot and this thing will just, it'll, it'll flip over. And the reason it does that is because the radius down here is in the wrong spot in perpendicularity, I guess you would say, to the, the pivot point. And the pivot point, although it stays the same, the actual relationship between this axis and this uh, block down here does change as you move this. You'll notice, you probably can't see it from there, but when you're at this full uh, extension here, the pivot point is like here, and then as you move it, it kind of moves over a little bit. So that makes cutting this out a little bit tricky, um, but other than that, everything worked pretty well. I haven't tried this yet, so what I'm gonna do is leave it as is. We'll get the belt on, we'll make a platen, and then if this works, great. If it needs any modification, we'll do it at that point. But as of right now, I am gonna be able to adjust my attention uh, free of this handle, and then also operate this all within the same mechanism. So what I kind of had in my mind did work out well, but now we need to see in actuality if this will work um, and turn out to be as good as I want it to be. Other than that, I got these pulleys mounted up. That was really easy. And I got the motor installed, which is pretty simple as well. The next step is to get on to making the platen wheel attachment um, and just dialing in a couple of other things on the grinder. Let's get started with the next step and uh, get to it. got the rotary platen on here. Good news is uh, the design I think is gonna work. Um, there are a couple things that we do need to address and we do have to kind of take everything down and redo a couple things. First thing is the tracking does seem to work well. However, with this fully adjusted um, down, the belt is rubbing on the side here. So in order to make this happen, we're gonna have to space everything out 
uh, just a little bit farther. That's not a huge issue, uh, but just something to note. This infinite tracking works decent, um, but there is a couple spots where it will actually flip back. So I can keep the tracking in a couple different locations, but there is like one spot here where it'll kind of move a little bit. Um, I think I'm gonna leave it, uh, mainly because I can adjust the tension as well, just by getting this thing uh, out a little bit further, but we'll see. It works 85% uh, of what I want it to do. So once we get it running, then I can kind of test it a little bit more. But for now, until we get the VFD, I think I'm gonna leave it. The main issue that we have, and I'll turn this around, is this will not work in the flat platen mode. So you can see, and this thing is heavy. We're pretty much all the way over, and when I bring it all the way over here, it still will not go to the flat platen. Now there's a couple things I can do there. The first thing is I can take these wheels and I can bring them closer to the center line. That would work, um, and I am probably gonna do that, but I really wanna keep the wheels as far apart as possible to keep that platen rather large. So unfortunately, although I don't wanna do this, the best solution is to actually shorten this. And it doesn't need to be shortened a lot. I'm gonna shorten this a little bit and then shorten this, um, and then probably a little bit of both will get me where I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut it like right here, and that's gonna give me about an extra inch and a quarter of travel. And then I'm gonna move these bolts right in line with these screws. It'll work perfectly. It'll give me the clearance I need um, but it's gonna be a lot of work just to get this rotary platen to work. So let's get to that um, and get everything back to this point, hopefully in a working position.
All right, well, we're nearing the end of the belt grinder project. I got a bunch of things wrapped up on the last step. Uh, we got this table made. It's articulating so it can be adjusted in any way. Uh, I got the tension sorted out. I made this little shield here to reduce sparks. Um, other than that, I got the VFD mounted and then I'm, I made another table over here. The big thing that I want you guys to take away with if you're building a machine like I am, once I got the machine up and running, I didn't disassemble it and paint it and get, get all excited like I wanted to. Um, I knew that I would need to test it and make modifications. I spent about a day or two simply tuning the machine, doing different spacers, different positions, redrilling holes, just to make sure everything tracked uh, the way I wanted it to. In the beginning, it was working decent, uh, but I really wanted to dial it in. I originally thought this plate was out of square, but it was within like a tenth of a degree, really wasn't the main issue. Uh, the main issue that I had is this rotates on a pivot point, a one inch hole that I drilled. I drilled that hole off maybe like 0.4 or five degrees, and it would allow the platen to track correctly, but when I rotated it around, it would track differently um, on the wheel. The other thing that may basically told me that it wasn't aligned properly was when I would go from forward to reverse, the belt would move way over like a half of an inch. Now there is gonna be some direction of movement, but the better you have this tracking, uh, the less movement. So on certain settings, I can go from forward and reverse and the belt slides over like an eighth of an inch, very uh, negligible. You can basically dial that in up here. Um, other than that, I'm gonna make a separate video on getting all this tuned. Uh, it can be quite frustrating. Uh, I don't have all the answers, but uh, I did learn a lot um, in the process of get, getting everything set. And a lot of the steps that you take in this final run of tweaking everything is gonna be the difference between your machine running good um, and the difference of it running poorly and you being pretty frustrated with the machine that you built. Um, the good news is though, because you're building the machine, you have the ability to manipulate it. So if you build the machine and it doesn't track right, it doesn't run true, um, and you mess with it for a while, it can be pretty frustrating. But the good news is even if some of this stuff isn't perfectly straight, like your motor plate is bent, or this platen isn't perfectly square, a lot of that can be accounted for. You just have to go down the right steps to make that happen. So hopefully that other video will just go into more detail on how to do that, because I know I was struggling with it. I went online and it looked like a lot of other people were struggling with getting the tracking and tension perfect. Um, and it is really hard to do. Even a lot of the machines they sell uh, can track really well one way, but not as much the other way. I know like Travis's machine tracks really well in forward and reverse and a, a couple of the others, but some of the other lower quality machines um, have had tracking issues in reverse. So it does make it a little bit more difficult, um, but it is possible. So everything worked out good there. Um, I'll review just this kind of other stand that I made. So this slides out and this, and I didn't shoot the making this cause it's super easy, but this guy comes in um, and you know, it comes right up here to the belt. And that way, when you go horizontal, you have a nice surface here to sand to get nice flat grind. Um, let's see. Let me just bring this back down. The other thing you'll notice is I upgraded the spring. Uh, that was giving me a lot of issues. I had a weaker spring on there and I just kept going to a bigger and bigger screen, screen, sorry, spring until I got the biggest one I had. It helped a lot. This infinite tensioning system is not perfect, but it is like 90% infinite. Um, with a weaker spring, I was having the issue that I talked about earlier, where this would basically get to a certain position and fall backwards because uh, the belt was applying a lot of tension. Now, it really does pretty much stick in any position you wanna put it in. Um, but what I found is it kinda works best if you lock it in the down position. Um, that way it's nice and taut. Um, and once you get it into that position, it kinda cams over, it's not going anywhere. Other than that, everything else worked out pretty good. 
I'm gonna get to painting it and then we'll go through everything at the end. I am super happy with the way this belt grinder turned out. I'm not a knife maker, but when I seen one of these for the first time four or five years ago, I knew I wanted one. The ability to grind steel, which is difficult, efficiently and in a very nice controlled way, uh, was something that I've always wanted. I'm excited that I built this and it turned out amazing. I'm looking forward to using it in the next couple projects. If you have any questions about the build process, put them down below. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Um, my advice to you is if you're thinking about building one of these, go for it. It will be challenging, but it'll be worth it.